Man, this is live. Anything can happen. 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 And what if you fuck up? Man, this is live. Anything can happen. If we piss scared, I get a boner or fucking fart or something. Man, this is live. Anything can happen. Shut the fuck up, man. You're making me nervous. There I am. There I am. Almost didn't show up. We got a welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. Uh, we've got, if you didn't see the uh, the thumbnail, we've got a special guest tonight on the show, Rich Rowland, who's worked with, I think, everybody. He's worked with Kenner. He's worked with McFarlane. He's worked on Spawn. He worked on Superpowers. He worked, I know what y'all going to kill me on those V series. Y'all going to, I know uh, that's all y'all want to talk about is those. V series that didn't get released because whenever I bring up the V series, uh, you know, you guys always tell me more. Where are they at? He also worked on the Freddy Krueger doll. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, I've got a picture. I'll pull it up in a second when I'm doing interview. And this was a, a doll where you, it was, uh, it's going to kill me. Max, FX Max. There's like a special effects doll. It's very cool. It's supposed to be a whole line of that, but only Freddy Krueger, I believe, got released. So, Let's see who's over here in the chat room right now before we get started. Give it a little bit more time to get people in here. Uh, give me a couple of minutes. We'll check out the chat to see what's going on. Uh, what's well, very true, Jumpman? Uh, a guy before you said that test shots are not prototypes. And I said, yes, that is true. Um, good evening. Good evening, Bradley. Bruce, I think you really enjoyed this interview, Bruce. I saw you. You're always in your shop working on your uh custom figures and everything so i think you'll have a good time watching him because he showed me around his shop a little bit showed me little tools i don't know what the tools are to be honest with you but i'm sure bruce knows and everybody else so we got that we've got uh got a hey oh, that's me right there I still want those v toys so yes why did they release them we want those v toys man Ever since we found out we didn't get them as promised, man, we we want them. Um, do, do, do. Hey, Joe, there's Go Figure. There's the Go Figure guys always in here with the chat. Uh, oh, Samantha Sledge is in here, man. McFarlane tar toys are pretty amazing. He was telling me the story uh, about working for McFarlane and an uh, interesting story. And I'll let him talk about that a little later also. But uh, hopefully you guys got some questions for him. We're going to try to do this for about an hour. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I always love McFarlane. Yeah, I mean, McFarlane was the first one that really aimed their toys at collectors. Right there, especially in that 90s collector's boom. So I think that's it. Um, if we're ready, let me... Let me see if he's ready. Okay, he's ready. Uh, let me play a video real quick so we can get everything set up. Uh, I just had it ready. I'll play this video that was about the toy video we did today. Uh, so let's play this video, then we'll be right back with Rich Rowland. This is the new baby in our family. A baby doll. A famous doll. Archie Bunker's grandson, Joey Stivick. So, of course, he's special. Your child can give him a drink from his bottle, then he wets. And when his diaper is changed, it's clear that Joey Stivick is a physically correct boy doll. My husband and I think that's terrific. And he's such a soft and cuddly doll. Archie Bunker's grandson, Joey Stivick, by Ideal, is a physically correct boy doll. What a great idea. 
Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know that commercial was that short. Okay, here he is. Here's, here we go. Oh, let me bring it over here so we can see us both. So I wasn't ready like I thought I was. There we go. There Rich Rowland, how's it going? Fine, there thank you. Are. How are you? Doing good. I how's like that. Guy? I said it earlier. I like that guitar back there. What's that? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. One of mine. Is and that bubblegum? Everybody is as okay as we are. Yeah, hopefully so. Is that that's bubblegum in that in that guitar? Is that a bubblegum machine? Yes, it is. It it's jammed yes. at the moment. Okay. That's now a before guitar, we get started. That's a guitar joke. <laughs> jam it. Took me a minute. I'm kind of slow. Yeah, we're I'm in the south. It takes a little bit. You can put a quarter. It usually takes quarters. We did it for a trade yeah. show like a long time ago. And honestly, on both regards, literally and metaphorically, it jams. <laughs> gotcha. Um thank you. Okay. Uh before we thank get you. to the questions. Before we get to the questions, let's just run over some toy lines that you did so people kind of get know what to ask you. But you did superpowers, right? I didn't some... do all of those. No, we made the a playset for them. The playset. That, that didn't come out. Um, I did. Uh, it was uh, uh, Dark Side. Uh, dark Side. The Fortress. Yeah, the Dark Fortress, whatever. Um, Fortress of Doom or something like that. Um, it... Yeah, the uh, dragon figures, the Dark Side head on the top. Um, all the mountains, the the entire environment. I didn't do the figures on that. Okay, one. just the, yeah. but if you can, it seems like you did a lot. Head, of, it's a it seems like you did figure. a lot of toys. It it it's, looks pretty good though that detail. I say it looks like you did a lot of figures that didn't get released. Um, I guess that's the nature time, of it. Well, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, more did get released that didn't, but yeah. it's a crapshoot, and they're making prototypes, so. Um, as it turns out, there are a bunch and I'm happy to chat all about that. Okay. Um, and, okay. Before it's asked in the room, maybe, you know, where is that alien FX figure? <laughs> the alien that prototype, you know, that you did the Freddy Krueger one. Yeah. Did you do the alien is on the back of the box? It shows an alien. Ah, no. Um, that's, uh, Gary Borbridge did that. I forget the guy's name. I'm not great at names. They weren't in my uh, network, if you will. Those those cats uh, that made the original prototypes of that line. Uh, when Matchbox took it on, uh, they came to the shop I was working at at the time, which was a job shop. Um, I was always a gun for hire. So, you know, they showed me what they wanted. We knew what they were looking for faster than most folk and uh, put together that line very quickly and lovely. It came out great, frankly. I have only a couple of the Max FX doll. I have a couple of those pieces left over. Uh, you can see it's hollow. Yeah, let me make you bigger real quick, because I can, sure. so people can see it. I'm gonna move over here if I can. In there, for you. there you go. That, yeah, that's that's the scale of it. And let me get his face in there for you. There you go. And then yep, the that's, back. Of that's his Freddy. Head. And there's the back of his head. Now, originally, they would have gone together. Uh, you can see a snap tap up here. So that was engineered by me. And that would go snap around in your head. Okay. That's Did you that. design the uh, the the doll also the the figure under it, or was that kind of just a custom? Actually, um, a guy in this booth did the uh, generic. <laughs> yeah, it was a G. You know, it, all we needed on that was a generic head. Yeah, it didn't look um, like anything special. Nothing too special. Uh, GI Joe style and proportion just average yeah. guy and um he made that first i believe and then i would proceed at that point to make sure i put a layer of wall thickness uh for the freight that would go on top of it and then once i knew there weren't going to be any thin spots you expand the head from there yeah um i would say uh, originally in clay but eventually the whole thing would go into a wax 
sculpture. And he, this is a casting. Let me see if I can get that in. That's a solid casting. Before we split the parts apart and hollowed it out for the head that went inside. And then in manufacturing, hmm. I think they adjusted the inner head anyway, which happens. Yeah. Um, the rest of it's history. <laughs> I got yeah. you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's well. It was, and that's it. Yeah, for it people don't know. That's the <laughs> so Yeah, that line. I don't know if it didn't sell or or what. But no, it yeah, sold I mean, out I overnight. Actually, it sold out really? overnight was the word I got. But uh, the uh, a religious group uh, protested it because it was macabre and uh, threatened boycott all of the toy stores that carried them, including Toys R Us and, and Walmart, whatever, Kmart, wherever they were being yeah. sold. And uh, so they pulled them. Um, you know, I was at Toy Fair shortly after that happened, and all the folks at Matchbox were patting me on the back because we made history. Basically, the first toy to be essentially pulled from the American market on account of somebody's opinion. Really? Yeah, there's well, the internet. I mean, I know how, especially in the, yeah, I know how it is. I uh, heard a lot of that. Um, yeah, yeah, like I said, happens. I know there was an alien and a Frankenstein and some other ones, and it's always been a mystery. No one's seen them since that picture, so we always. Well, they uh, never, they never went to, that was going to be the next round. That was always the intention of the folks that I spoke with. Um, and because of the uh, response that it got, you know, in the news, um, I mean, it was on Entertainment Tonight, that old show, which oh, really? was like equal to like uh, TMZ today. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was on every network news over everywhere about it. The pull string is the one that really raised hell. The, the Freddy uh, Krueger one? The large Freddy Krueger, sure. Yeah. That one really raised their ire. Um, here, I have a, that head here. Let me grab that. Dust it off. I can tell you why. <laughs> First of all, the show brains. And that's a production. Oh, that's a, yeah. Yeah, that's a production job there. And the scarring. I got that down pretty good. And, and you have to understand, it wasn't supposed to be an identical portrait of him as close as the FX Freddy, the Max FX yeah. doll was. The bigger one, they really wanted it a hair more cartoony. Okay. And, uh, That's some good detail. Really got, thank you. I got a lot of oh, the teeth. Let me see if I can get that in there for you. Hmm. Yeah, their teeth. Suck. Yeah, that's they're, good. To, yeah, that is good. Yeah, they're nasty. teeth too. Yeah, and uh, yeah. in that regard, I got I got dental tools behind me coming out the wazoo. <laughs> so it looks like you held on to a lot of stuff. I did. Now that's that's good now, especially you know a lot of that I, uh, prototype stuff is worth a lot of money now. Turns out, I, who knew? Who knew? And, and yeah, I don't imagine. mind telling you, since absolutely, and I don't mind saying it, since I didn't get royalties, contract job, right? Um, on any of that stuff, um, it's nice that the, a little bit of a annuity later in life, um, that these prototypes ended up being that valuable, and they really are. Uh, a lot of uh, you were asking me earlier, any of the prototypes we've sold have landed in good hands, so. We're happy about that, and I like their your viable collectors, bona fide. Yeah, guys. that's good. I, got, I talked to a guy that did a lot of Star Wars know. stuff, and and he didn't. A Star Wars guy didn't say much of the prototype. Some of them, and he was like, "Man, if I held on to them, <laughs> he said he'd be retired now." Yeah, I hear you. Uh, Not quite. I can't retire from it. You know, there were only so much. But uh, and, and a friend of mine, Lee Volpe from Geico, had. Uh, introduced me to uh, the uh, Hakes Americana and Collectibles auction place uh, way back when um, because he had too many Dino Rider prototypes in his garage and he really needed to get rid of yeah. them. It was time. And he had done that. And I was impressed with uh, what he got for them. 
<laughs> but, yeah. you know, when we needed the, when you need the money, you do what you got to do. And we miss yeah. them. I mean, we have good photos. And if it and goes into a collector's hand, that's good too. You know, it's going Absolutely. somewhere. People, yeah, we drooled over them for our lifetime. You know, I, it, I have enough other prototypes that we're happy with that, uh, you know, we miss them a little, but it's like it's, they got to go sometime. Yeah, I mean, at least it didn't get thrown away, you know. True. Um, although, although I don't want to <laughs> go there too much, but yeah, I can think of uh, the superpowers playset. One of the mold, one of the castings of that base for the uh, superpowers playset, uh, I'm pretty sure was discarded during Hurricane Sandy. Oh, and really? It, yeah. it would, that one piece, I, I can't even begin to. Estimate, yeah, the base for that. The real, yeah, they, yeah, that would have probably there's a lot of superpowers, and you got you know, superhero collectors. Oh, that would have been a I can't even imagine how much it would have gone for these days. <laughs> a, a lot, yeah, yeah. Show another the rear view in there. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you have the rear view available. Uh, I no, I, did, I didn't pull did the you? rear view one. Oh. No, I should have, I didn't grab it. Yeah, yeah that's a good one. It's enough yeah, that um, you got this. I don't know why they didn't release that. I mean, that looks like it would have been a hot. I don't know if it came to the end of the toy line when it was sales dropped or what, but that, that looks I like it would have been a really good seller. And I have um, no idea. I swear. I wish this was, it was beautiful. It was really cool little toy for kids. And, you know, when we made these things, we did get into the head of it. You know, you, you're taking every uh, thousands of an inch very seriously in engineering but on the other hand yeah. kids got to play with it and uh you know while i'm tooting my horn a little i might brag and, and knock on wood not a kid has ever been physically harmed by any toy I've ever made or designed that went well, that's good. yeah yeah that's yeah, uh, safety let's pull... first safety oh, yeah. first right um let me pull these up for let's talk v because i know that's what everybody wants a lot of people probably want to hear and there's the headshot yeah. you based the figure on. Let me pull the prototype up. Yeah, wait till you uh, hear what I is... found. Oh, what'd you find? You're <laughs> going to love this. You're going to love this, and then I'll let you take over again. Listen, I okay. was looking for this. Yeah, I was looking for this. pieces to bring to you today. And I found a casting of the ogre from... Um, the Dungeons and Dragons figures I did. And oh, really? I, it, I had, yeah, yeah, right? And and I, I had a couple things in my hand, and it slipped out on my desk, rolled to the back of my desk, to the wall, and behind it, behind cartons. So I got on my knees, I went down, I reached under like a brave soul, because who knows what was there. And look what I found. I didn't oh, find the ogre. I thought, look what I you found. You didn't find the ogre. Let me make you bigger. So people it's can there. See it. It's there. But this is the only Diane head. Let me make sure she's as focused as possible for you. There's a prototype of, of her. This is a very hard, solid casting. Let me put her yeah. just a little that way now. There she is. Man, so, hey, you you found it because of me. <laughs> come, come again? I said, you found it because of me. <laughs> yeah. That's what I call timing. That made my day, my friend. That is. Well, I asked you last night, too, because that's when it hit me. You did that, and I asked you. Yeah, I didn't have any all these. to show you. <laughs> I was uh, I think, yeah, there she is. Because you sold this prototype, right? Yeah, that one's that one, one. All lock, stock, and barrel, I'm, I'm sad to say. What you're looking at there is the original wax that is later whitish color. And yeah. to the right is a, uh, you know, ivory colored uh, blonde urethane um, master casting uh, for samples, undoubtedly. Um, you can also see in this picture how the hair was, uh, that was a first for me. And maybe the most challenging part was to have the hair separate from the figure. Uh, a lot like what McFarlane oh, does yeah. these days. Yeah, it was, yeah, we didn't do that then. We relied on paint. And a yeah, parting line. I can see that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, there's a nice picture. I wish we had a bigger picture. That's, I believe, yeah. ultimately from the catalog uh, where it was shown in Toy Fair that year. Yeah, I wish I know what happened. I bet those were 
<laughs> that's the one that was like, what happened to this stuff? I said, back then people didn't care. Power just got thrown away. Saturday. I'm sorry to say that the two couple guys that I know to ask have passed away last year. Oh. So I yeah, lost like a I couple of my best friends in the business uh, that way. Of age, not COVID, I might be happy to say. Oh, uh, that's good. But uh, um, yeah, I'll miss them. They're great guys. Yeah. That's uh, trying to catch up with you guys. I know it's, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to, hold on, before we get into the questions here, let me pull this up, because you had a good story about the Spawn figure. Sure. What you said did look like Holly Berry, and I was like, yeah, it does look like. Yeah. They said, this would have been, yeah. <laughs> this would have been Spawn's wife with child, McFarland. Yeah, Do you know about so. what year this was? Uh, Early 90s, I'm guessing. Yeah, it would have been uh, 94, 93. Off right when they first started doing it. Yeah. 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 The shirt would have been made separate. Uh, that was one of those situations where McFarland stuff, they wanted that. Um, that's a piece that I sculpted while I had my studio in Warminster, Pennsylvania. Their studio was located in Upper State. <clears throat> I don't know if it's New York or uh, Jersey. Uh, out in the woods, beautiful, beautiful studio. A lot of really, really talented guys. Um, as a matter of fact, they were working on um, uh, Burton's. What was the uh, with Jack? Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow. They had the tree. They were sculpting the tree at Sleepy Hollow at the time. I, oh. The place knocks your socks off. Um, the, my problem with working with them is that the guys that were on a, a salary uh, could have could have could handle their changes. And when they asked me to do it one way, and then three weeks later wanted another way, you're not paying for changes. Then I'm not working for you much more. So I didn't care to move there. So yeah. it was a one-time great experience. I'll say that. Good, good people. Okay. And how? Uh, let me pull these up too, because these were probably sure. fun to do because they're they're really different than probably anything else you were working on. Uh, the uh, crash dummy figures. Yeah. yeah. And I really like. Uh, and you got the baby thank in the you. stroller. But I really like the run over cat. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I had total artistic license with uh, pretty much all of this. Now I did not make bodies. There you go uh, for that. I didn't make the bodies for the uh, figures of Larry and Daryl and uh, uh, what was the other one? Um, uh, the overweight guy, uh, Flat yeah. Tire or Fat okay, Tire. Yeah, something like that. yeah I can't remember their names now. Are you talking about yeah. that? Oh, it's hard. But uh, one of them had a heavier head, and I don't have a picture of that one. That would be the uh, Flat Tire guy. Yeah. I love doing um, that. So I just did the three heads and then I, and the dog, the cat, which was hysterical. Fun. I, I really love doing that. And then the baby, I had 110% likes with that to the point where the thumb actually fits in the mouth. If you want it, you know, we swing it up, it'll go into the mouth. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. The oh, devil's in the details. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. true. Well, um, we'll that hop over to. Here. Hop over to Double Dragon a little bit because I forgot they even made these toys until I started talking to you. And I was like, "Oh yeah, Double Dragon." I forgot about these. I was kind of out of toys by then. Yeah, uh, so I kind of missed a big the boat. Time long, TV but... show. Big time Saturday yeah. morning TV show. Yeah, yeah. And I, when I mentioned you did them, a lot of people say, "Oh yeah, man, I had those. I remember those." So, uh, so you got a couple. Show another one right there. Um, what is what line is this from? Is this Double Dragon? No, that's the ogre, actually. That's one of those heads I oh, that's said, right. rolled off the table today. Uh, that's the guy. Um, that's um, the ogre from uh, Dungeons and Dragons. From that's the right, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Yeah. yeah, early yeah. 80s. Some of the first figures we did. Um, and I can say that uh, all of these figures were originally done in clay. You can see some of the clay modifications here in this one that I, I put in to change the legs along the way. Um, but originally, and this one is a fun story that it turned out to be a, essentially a uh, self-portrait. This is, <laughs> I found one of the remaining pieces, and I 
I have to tell you, before I knew that I could get away with that, essentially, uh, <laughs> that it was allowable, um, I had sculpted this guy and it looked, it just looked like me without a beard and without a mustache and without curly hair at yeah. the time. Right. And, and so I, you know, sitting my bench, I have to tell you, I worked hours trying to make it not look like me. <laughs> I read <laughs> well, this. I did. I, I literally smushed it in my hand because it looked identical for a while. Yeah. And I literally smushed the clay in my hand, started from scratch, wiped that one off, did it again. It looked like this and it paid. Yes. And I was like, okay, let it go. But I, as far as I can tell you, it really still looked like me. And later, <laughs> then Tom. Sneak it in there. Yeah, the young male Titan. I have one behind me here. Yeah, here's a production one. Oh, I have to watch my knees here. Sorry. Here you go. Here he is. That's him finished. Okay. Looks like you. It does. Yeah. It does. It still does. I have to. I'm glad. And then later, Tom Wells, the designer, you know, that designer said, no, no, you could have left it. I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Hey, you me. Piece. I'm in the <laughs> yeah. So you, fi you, you, you find that out after you're, you're done with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, long gone, out of the shop. And he says, oh, no, you could have left it looking just like you. And it ended up, except for the bit of a broken nose. Yeah, I mean, could have had a mini. You have your own action figure. Yeah, it would have been mini me. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know there was some toy design. It still looks like me. Yeah, it I mean, I can see it. Like yeah, sure. Pretty close. But uh, I guess, what, 35 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but i know some uh kenner had a couple more pounds on me <laughs> right yeah we all got that i know some kenner toy designers that snuck things in they're they got their daughter's name and some toys and you can look for and find and absolutely some people just sneak <laughs> some people just sneak things in yeah from that day on like from 1983 or whatever it is or yeah that was an early one in 1982 but from then on, I, I was noticing that. And in fact, to this day, I have friends in the music business who play for things like Animaniacs and um, other major movies. And they're the A-list musicians and stuff. And we were watching a cartoon the other day. And my buddy was one of the characters in the orchestra in the cartoon. And I, I had to send him a clip of it because it was Joel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do that. Disney did that a lot too. The Disney so, yeah. uh, people did that a lot. You'll see a lot of Sneaking. great faces in there. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to open the chat room up now and see if anybody, let me hop over and see if anybody got any questions here. Uh, sure. Uh, somebody said you're too young. No, you're the young male Titan. Okay. Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I didn't so have his uh, physique. I, I'm six foot three. Uh, I've always been built like a string bean. So the young male Titan had a little more, yeah, a little more meat on him than I hey, did. So and that, if you'll take that yeah. aside, yeah, if I might wish I could look like that. Yeah, I do. It's, it's, a, it's the fantasy figure of you. That's, that's the fun Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to open it up. If anybody else has any questions, let me know, and I'll pop it up there. See if I see any up top. Mm -hmm. Were the, toy based on, uh, were the toys based on the ones that the kids played with on the show? Oh, never mind. I answered that one for him all. But he was talking about right. V. Yeah, on the TV show, they had some toys, but they were done before before you guys went to work. So Correct. Uh, they weren't the same figures. Oh, see if anybody yeah, else is a whole new line. And for all we know, it was a proposal from an entrepreneur design shop that may or may not have been connected to one or more toy companies at the time because that's how they did that you wouldn't know why they got uh, why they never got out do you well that show was no. probably canceled pretty fast so that's probably why that could have had something you know what you might have something there yeah look into that you may be right you may, really yeah because when i did my i remember doing a video on it and the ratings went down episode after episode so they probably pulled the plug on it um okay this goes let's see here 
Mr. Roland, what years did you scalp action figures, and do you still do them now? Um, not recently. I've kind of been doing my own thing for quite a while. Um, I keep up with the toy industry. I see what's going on there. Uh, it's not hard to get on that bike again. Um, but no, I've been doing my own thing between music instruments and my own entrepreneur real uh, enterprises. And um, I do take commissions from some other clients. I just designed a uh, um, beautiful uh, set of solid gold or gold, solid silver at the moment, uh, gold plated uh, sunglasses uh, with a uh, mm. Cherokee. Uh, Apache, excuse me, a, a Native American theme for uh, some folks here out in L.A. So uh, I'll be posting that soon on my Facebook, but, you know, it's something for someone else. It's a commission I like to take. Um, yeah. I liked it now and then, but I've been doing my own thing mostly. Okay. Uh, well, I got Go Figure has a 30-year-old question for you, but uh, did you do any Swamp Thing? No, no, uh, he's not gonna let answer your question. Then, so yeah, no, <laughs> no, I know them. I know that line. Yeah, I was the only guy in the shop that was allowed to go to the mall to all the toy stores before I would start <laughs> on any project because we didn't have the internet down then. Oh yeah, you had to go look, see whatever. Oh yeah, <laughs> that or to the library or to any toy store. I would spend an hour there at least scanning the shelves and seeing what's happening and what we were up against basically yeah uh i think you only said you worked on that one superpowers but did you work on the clark kent phone booth that never came out do you remember that i wish i wish <laughs> okay. i wish i only remember that one okay. yeah. um, sounds like something i would have liked to have been involved with that's for sure yeah um so you, you did freelance the whole time. You never worked for an actual... Pretty much, yeah. I would say the majority... Well, I worked for another shop for about 10 years and created their sculpture department. So everything that came in the shop was essentially because I was there. Um, they had basic work earlier, but when I got there, we went hard. And the shop got way bigger. And I was managing all of the sculptures and the sculpture business that was going through there. Um, for about 10 years until I was told I could make more money if I opened up my own shop. So that's what I did. Yeah. Probably better did. that way. And we did yeah. make more money. Yeah. 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 I yeah. say far more money and more freedom and everything else. Yeah. Uh, and, and kind of working with manage you your own people. overhead. You know, when you work for you, yeah. you get to choose your overhead. These folks had 35 guys working in a shop. They had to keep the heat running, the air conditioning going. You know, they were charging in horrible, expensive prices. Um, yeah. And the process is tears to begin with. So, you know, it was top dollar. Right. Uh, Samantha says, do you have any technical background in sculpting, uh, architecture, Samantha, and engineering? I, yeah. Yeah. I got a great answer for you. When I was teaching at Lehigh University in the engineering department, um, representing sculpture, engineering, and uh, legal uh, departments that were being merged at the university, um, I was self-conscious that I didn't even, I only lay, I only stayed in industrial design in the department at the University of the Arts or PCA, Philadelphia College of Art for one day, even though I was best friends with like a half a dozen people in the department, my passion was in the sculpture department because of the amount of creativity and freedom you have in that kind of environment. And yeah. as a result, I'm like really self-conscious by the time I'm teaching at Lehigh University. Um, and I said to the head of the uh, engineering department, I told him as much. And he said, and I'll repeat it. Uh, he said, before I went to engineering school, I didn't know how to spell it. Now I are one. Now. <laughs> So, oh, yeah, I've been engineering on my own, you know, as it turns out, since I was a little kid, taking oh, things apart, good. making things from scratch, uh, assembling things, designing things in my head. Uh, that's engineering, as it turns out. And if you study the numbers and go by math and physics and so forth, you can't really go too far wrong. And it's 
okay to have other people criticize your work and make it better. That's what it takes. Um, so no, not a technical background in engineering. Um, in in sculpture, um, yeah, I have a master's degree. Um, and while I don't profess to uh, sculpt in the classical way, I can tell you I my studio, my private studio in college they gave me to do my own thing. I lost my keys, but I can finish. Um, it was right next to Walter Elbacher's class that was an art, a, a, a sculpture class, a modeling, figure modeling, um, yeah. where they had naked models to the studio mm. to the left and naked models to the studio to the right. And he talked about how to carve and work in clay with the uh, figure in a classical manner. Uh, semester after semester after semester, and I, I never had to take his class because I s essentially sat in next door with a curtain between us while I was doing my thing, uh, listening to the lectures on proportion and surface and muscles and tendons and veins and appearance and gesture and all that good stuff. So I'm, I, I would say at least. I would say five to six semesters. I heard the same class over and over. You heard it over. Yeah, so sunk yeah, in. Every year, it, over. You know, until they paid me. My yeah, my feeling was, <laughs> pay me, I'll buy it. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the first toy line you did? You remember? Uh, I do. Or action. Um, <clears throat> well, action figures would have been the uh, Dungeons and Dragons for sure. Um, the first play set I ever worked on was the original uh, Orphan Annie movie. Uh, we made Annie's Annie's mission, and I had just started working for them, and I could make things little. I could make small things that happen to do the reduction process and the big machines and all that. I could just yeah. go right to it and make, hmm. make a fork that was like three quarters of an inch long <laughs> and would never pass the... the uh, the solo test and the tube test in the toy industry but you know maybe this was made for people 16 years old and older for sure um but i made the silverware for the mansion set i made the turkey for the silver platter i made that sat on it uh serving trays candelabras all kinds of details and small stuff and uh little, little got into the figurative thing you know through one example that we would knock off uh knock out uh at a time and the word got out. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, how do you feel about Mattel's uh, maker program where people are able to submit toy designs to a major company without an agent? You can speak on that, any if you know about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have. I have my. I have my opinions. Um, <laughs> feel free to keep them to yourself if you want to. Though. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> want to move on from that one <laughs> yeah we're breaking up the, the, yeah the i can't hear you i can't hear you uh -oh, yeah. what happened there we're breaking up <laughs> oh which uh, cr uh, crash dummies besides the baby and the stroller did you completely design ah okay well again I the heads for daryl um what's his name uh fat tire and uh and one other guy, Daryl, and another guy, and like three heads and um, the baby and Splat Cat and Hubcat, the dog. Okay. They did one called Junk Man. And I want to get it just for myself. Um, we could do that. <laughs> did you do a monster in my pocket? Did. I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Tina, can you get me my oh, hey, spell? Thank you. Yeah. I'm not, I not want to stay in end of it. after some shop noise it's over. Too, yeah, I know my microphone. I'm so sorry, folks. Yeah, it happens. It's Believe not me, we've got a lot cuts. worse happening here. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, look, he said, Paul says he um, has a couple of your old prototypes from my from Monster in My Pocket. I do. I'll show you a couple. Right there. We got this one. And I got a few over where they put them. Here we go. Let me get the box here. 
there we go. We used to have a showroom in the old days. Now it's uh, my dining room. Hmm. Okay, and I think here's one more. That's right. Hey, I did it all. Or no, there were two more, but I we'll get to that. Yeah, I may not have them. I have a couple of them here. Well, uh, Paul says that he has some of yours, and he said he has some of yours. Really? Who is this, Paul? Ewa. What do you? What has he got? I don't know. We'll ask him and get him to tell you what he has. But he said yeah, he has a couple please. in his collection. Here, I have a bad casting of Triton, two to one. These are two to ones. So you remember they were smaller. I'll get to sample out in a minute. Here's one of those collector sets. That's actually the size of them. Like that. And then, so that's two to one. I forgot all about um, those. <laughs> yeah, I have more. Where are they? Here they are. Here's another one. This is Gally. Another test casting that you can see she's missing an arm. Yeah. So this is the casting reject that I still have around for my amusement. Um, here's the very first one ever made for the line. Hydra. It has okay. seven snake heads. And it's so yeah. hard to see. Oh, I, see. I can tell now. Okay. Fine, Man, super, you, super fine detail. You are I'm good at trying. small. <laughs> yeah, they were, I was, and we we did have to reduce them, but basically they were sculpted two, two to one. Here's a red cap. His knife is broken. I have it over here. To, I got to throw some super glue on it another time. Yeah. Um, Triton. Oh, here, yeah, here's a good two to one example. Here. Here's Triton along with produ a production one of him. Oh, okay. So they sized it down that small. All right. And they were squishy. They were bendies. Okay. I, yeah, I forgot about that line. So, oh, yeah. yeah you can bend them up. Uh, Monsters. Okay. Kind of Oculus. like the muscle yeah. figures. Yeah. And that, that was. Uh, that went international. That was all over Europe, Mexico, and the U.S. for sure. Uh, here's the, I don't know if you want to answer. You don't have to answer. <laughs> What's your thoughts on 3D oh, printing okay. no, technology? No, I, I'm happy to. I, I like that yes. one. That's a oh, good like one, that. okay. Yeah, you joke. That's a good one. No kidding. Um, again, mixed emotions, but I'm happy to speak out about it because it currently has its place. And currently, it's better than it ever was. And currently, you still have to hand finish a lot of what you make. Yeah. So that's a short answer. Now, in, back in the day when I opened up my own business, like 1989, CAD was just starting to happen. And so when I advertised in industrial design machines, uh, magazines, excuse me, I wrote my ad tagline was when CAD can't cut. <laughs> and so, yeah, and today it still can't cut a lot of stuff that creative artists are going to produce, including me. <laughs> yeah, it can't so, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, and if I had to do it over, if we were busier in the shop, uh, even my daughter was saying it would be cool to have for some of the small parts we make by hand out there. We had a shop in the back a small machine shop, basically wood, metal, plastic, et cetera, and paint jobs, mold room, whole, yeah. the whole ball of wax. Um, yeah, we would kind of consider adding it because there's some advantages. Okay, and um, we got Paul back with what prototypes he has of yours. The purple Tingo. I, I don't oh. know the lines, so maybe you know this. Purple <laughs> Tango. Is that no? I don't That's know. the one he had. Yeah, I'd have and he to had, see a picture, I think. Yeah, and he it's had a lot. And, it's the one with the wings and the... Oh, it's the one uh, with the wings and the, and the beak. The, yeah. I don't know that I did that one. I'm not sure if I did that one. What about this one right here, the I Wendigo? Six. I, Wendigo, okay, I wait. did. I did, yeah. Did I did the one. first... Yeah, toot my horn a little bit. I did do the uh, first uh, benchmark models for the rest of them that were produced i made half a dozen of them um specifically chosen 
not only for their marketing campaign, but for the difficulty that they might be experiencing with all the others that they were going to make. So they had right. me like homogenize a style, size of cuts, details, beads, you know, every little thing. So that in the hair, fur, wall thickness, posture, size, uh, height, width, and depth. So I made the originals to define that for the other, uh, there were about 240 more of them made, but they yeah. were done pretty much overseas, the rest of them, oh, as okay. far as I know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, were you inspired by Hal Harry Hal? Uh, I knew I was going to trouble that name. <laughs> Harry Hal. Uh, yeah, and in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my daughter's in animation, or was, and that was her major. Um, I love Harry, and I loved everything he ever did, and I still watch it uh, pretty much any time I can get a chance to. Um, God, the Godzilla movies and all that stuff. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I he was one of my heroes, for sure. Okay. Oh, uh, and look, he's got the doll right there in his picture, and he says, I have the full string straight right next to me. There you go. I just that, got his dog here. And his teeth, his teeth are really, yeah. really white. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Good to hear. Um, they asked, I think well, we talked you know, and even though they were banned, by the way, even though they were banned, junk man, hear, hear, hear this. <laughs> even though Freddie, the pull string was banned, and about, I don't know, 10 years oh. later, uh, they sold the license to uh, Spencer Gifts. And so yeah, it was yeah, reissued yeah. again. And since then, I believe it may be reissued again. And in fact, I have a copy. I might have known better. I would have sent you a copy of a, a, a what do you call it? A black market. One of those bootleg. A bootleg. Bootleg. Right, China, yeah. yeah. A bootleg <laughs> Freddy that was called Feddy. F-E-D-D-Y. Yeah, that'd be interesting uh, to see because they do some weird was, bootlegs. <laughs> and it was absolutely a, like a fifth generation mold made from the original head. So it was essentially the same head that they ripped off. But you got to understand that every time you copy a vinyl, the vinyl already shrank six to seven percent from uh, the original sculpture. So when they yeah. make a new vinyl, it's another three percent. And then to make production molds, it's another three percent. So now you're talking about at least hmm. ten to fifteen percent smaller than the original doll that you've seen on yeah. the market. Yeah, and that's hmm. the way you tell the difference. And it was kind of neat. I think we bought one. Did we buy one of those? No. I don't think we could. Yeah, I think they outlawed it here. They wouldn't let them in. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Samantha says, "Do you have any tools you can you use to scalp? You can show us sculpt." Sure. <laughs> sure. Let me pivot. Uh, without hitting too much stuff. Don't normally have a table there for the <laughs> camera. Oh, I'm hooked up on something. Oh, I'm under the, yeah, one moment. We'll be there. All right. Let me tuck in again. Samantha, I'll start with my funnest tools, like the first ones I ever made, basically. Uh, let me change the angle of that so we're not glaring. There you go. And I'll come over here a little, and I'm going to just tilt it down a little. You don't need to see me. Here's the first, Samantha, here's the first tool I ever made for sculpting toys. It's a scraping tool. It's made out of a bandsaw blade. It's sharp as a razor huh. on one edge. And it's a, a shallow curve on this one and a full blade. You could maybe see it. There it is. Yeah. I like, the, I like the handle on it, though. Yeah. It has character, no? Yeah. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, the reason I added the hat was because it makes a great palm scraper. Uh, and it was a right. it turned out, you know, as a learning exercise, it got me to where I made other tools that way. But even though... I did. The next kind of tools I made, here they go. I used old files, uh, which is really old carbon, high carbon files. My grandfather had given me, they had either worn out or broken. Mm. And so 
I'm I, this one. I'll get a white background somewhere there. Let's get up there. There it is. That's a sixteenth of an inch wide chisel. That's all it is is a chisel with a sharp yeah. sidewall. And there's there's that. And I used a fancy designer toothbrush that we had thrown. We're going to throw out to make my handle. Get my handle. <laughs> yeah. So that's just it, it. Made it easy to recognize on the bench. And it was handy. Right. And here's another one I made with a point on it. Let's come back here, right there. That one's almost 90 degree angle. You'll notice it's not really a 90 degree angle. Yes, yeah. because you need draft when you're carving. And again, that's a a neato carving blade made out of uh, an old file and an old toothbrush. Huh. Um, and then I got here's a couple more. Where's here they are? I got a little fancier. And, and I can tell you, everything you've seen and we talked about today, I've used these tools since then. 92 or 1 or 80. Um, so that's like 40 years. Um, a friend of mine showed me how to make a wood handle with, a, with, a, with a, a brass collar around it, how easy that would be. And so this is like at a purple heart. And it's just a handle that I turned on the lathe um with a chisel hmm. and that one's under that one's like 187 or something like three sixteenths of an inch wide with a very nice sharp razor edge on the front so i can straight yeah. carve or chisel into light material with that guy and you can see how little it is next to my finger man yeah that is yeah. and then i got smaller here's one that's about a 30 second of an inch blade at the end that's just a, a little mini chisel you can see hmm. the taper and then I, again i made this handle out of a aluminum on a lathe real quick and and just for everybody's sake uh you can use a drill <laughs> and you can turn it into a lathe <laughs> and make handles uh, and this is one of my favorite mm -hmm. this is really one of my favorite um working feathers or hair um i don't know if you can see the tip on that it's a really very yeah. lovely uh just about a, i'm gonna call it a 60 degree ellipse at the end and it's fairly thin and you can go in and there's the other side and it's a lovely little i forget when that wood is but lovely little black brass knurled hand, uh, sleeve on the top so the wood dog. yeah was gonna split mm. when a guy showed me that back then i was like i said that's for me oh here's another <laughs> handmade one not as pretty not as pretty this was day glow this was works in uv light i blast the candy uh it, it has cracked over 40 years but who cares it still works and it's a different ellipse a different curve on the top okay. of that bad boy there you go yeah. Okay. Um, those are some of my favorite handmade, homemade ones. Oh, and, and, and just for the record, you know, again, a palm chisel, I needed a half inch or so regular wood chisel that I chopped it up in the lathe, chopped off the rest of the handle. And it, again, it makes an absolutely nice. wonderful uh, scraper for push scraping, or you can pull, uh, scrape it that hmm. way. Um, you know, and then over the years, other handles I've made. This is for a, uh, th you know, since I make music instruments, I will tell you guys, uh, one of my favorite tools has turned out to be the guitar. It's a guitar maker or a violin maker's file that has no teeth on the side. And again, yeah, you can see how shiny that is. There's yeah. no teeth on the side. So when you're cutting in a shape in a corner on something that's square at that point, that's the way to go. Um, and if it isn't, then for those of you who are unfamiliar with rifflers, I'm going to put on my actual, one of my close-up lenses. Um, you're going to dig some of these a lot. These are called rip rifflers. And so if it's a peculiar surface that you're working on, this is a file. It's a very fine file. 
jewelry departments. Yeah. You can find them on um, on Amazon anywhere these days. That's a very fine cut, and you can see there's a bit of curve to it. So you can, and there's no teeth on the back, so you can just go in and get get into funky shapes. This is like a flat one for coming in that way, and again, one side is is bald. These were more expensive 20 and 30 years ago, but recently I've seen them online for like, I won't say a dime a dozen, but they're half as much money as they cost when I was buying them. It was um, one of the most fancy, the most fanciest of, of rifflers I have is this rat tail riffler. See it? Hmm. Yeah. And when you nope. need to get into an ellipse to file something you'll notice when i turn it it turns into a, an ellipse you see yeah and if you okay. change the angle let's see if i can do that for the camera when i dig in up here if 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 that's an ellipse there's the ellipse coming look at the ellipse i'm able to file oh yeah forward and back i can get in and make a beautiful tight ellipse by filing <laughs> that way right that guy so when you're cool. sculpting some like hair, you can get in there with those rifflers to finish the work up if your scrapers and, and, and um, files don't work, you can use those to get into there. You know, other wax tools, you know, I have mini ones and have big ones. You know, uh, in the sculpting business, your typical wax tools look like that. And yeah, you can heat it up, melt wax, uh, it has, I keep a nice sharp edge. The sharpening stones is uh, my middle name <laughs> in the shop. That one's just got a very nice flat, sharp edge on it yeah. that we keep there. Um, and in doubt, I just grab some 600 sandpaper and run it across my bench and it's sharp enough for the job. But we have sharpening stones too. And, you know, knives, this a little teeny knife. So, you know, again, hand wrought iron steel excuse me hand wrought uh and that's a blade it's almost yeah. razor and it's great for wax i i would use it all the time and this is a larger radius on the other side and it looks like a kitchen blade but remember it's only uh just a little over a half inch long and thin as yeah. thin as can be there it is Hmm. Uh, you got my drift. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> there it is. And they make all kinds of fancy ones. Those are some of my favorites, for sure. How'd I do? Yeah. <laughs> You're good. You got a lot of them. I saw somebody in the chat said, you, you can do it all, sure. somebody said. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we do. We try. And, you know, just to get technical with you, I this is a little two-inch divider. And you know, everybody has dividers, but having a two-incher around, when you're doing little work, this is heaven. Making curves, yeah. making measurements. You know, it's one thing to have. Here's your average size. And again, you can get these at Harbor Freight for like ten dollars or something like this. This one's fifty years old um, mm. and made out of better material, maybe. But you know, I'm all for buying the ten dollar one and earning my way up when it comes to tools. And right. my other philosophy, yeah, for sure. And my other philosophy is if the job pays for it. I'll take 10% of whatever I'm getting and pen, spend it on tools. And that's pretty much why I have so many tools these days. Um, yeah, that's smart way to do it. Yeah, only when you need them. And you and now and then you buy yourself a treat when you really have, you know, that extra cash. It, it's nice to yeah. get the ones on your wish list. But I always buy what I need. And it started with my first drill. You know, I was getting $200 for a job. I bought a $30 drill. Yeah. Wore it out in two years. You buy another one. Another one. And, and you I got a. One. I got Jenner Custom Toys. He does a lot of making his own figures in his in his shop. Uh, I see a comment. Jennifer, is it Jenner? Jenner. <laughs> Jenner. Oh, please. Yeah. He's just, just a comment. He says three D printing is cheating and takes away from the art. And that's his opinion. I agree, except it depends on what you're printing. Huh. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. If you're doing it for prototyping's sake and you need a hinge, 3D print, print or you need a tool to make right. the sculpture work. You know, there's a bunch of reasons why it's okay to allow it to exist. But um, yeah, there's nothing beats hands-on, old school, old school 
uh, sculpting. <laughs> I, I, I'm all for, yeah. I'm all for that. I, you know, that's me. Gotcha. Okay, Gary Scott says Rich is amazing. So I just give thank you, you my friend. Thank you. Uh, Been working at what, it. <laughs> what born amazing, huh? Uh, what's the smallest character you've carved? Oh, I have it here somewhere. Hold on. Man, you have everything yeah, on there the table. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Let me get these bases for them, or even uh, weird. They were play pieces, I believe. For and I'm sorry, I've checked my notes in my my logs a number of times for these, and I can't quite figure out if it was Kenner or one of the other game companies that would have hired me to do this. Um, it was a play piece for a, a game board. I'm trying to figure out how to hold these so you can actually see them. They're little. I'll hold two at a time. No, I'll hold three at a time so that maybe some of it. Ooh, that is small. Yeah, here we go. Let me see. I want this one view. Let me let me come in here. Yeah, it's gonna be hard to focus on that thing. <laughs> yeah. Let maybe, me back away. Maybe. Yeah, it's a little army guy. Here you go. It's a little army okay. figure with a gun in his hand. Um, he's got pockets and grenades on mm -hmm. his belt. He's got a helmet. There is stitching on the leather on his belt. Uh, here, here are the some production castings of them. Let me see if that shows up any better. The details show up better in that prototype I show you, but these are production shots yeah. of of that figure. And they would plug into. I'll show you the prototype bottom. I'll do this again. Here we go. Hmm. Um, it was just a hunk of rock. Whoops. It was just a hunk of. It's supposed to look like a top or top of a mountain or a hunk of a rock, and it would plug in. So he was that was the base that you could move the piece in the game. Oh, okay, yeah. And that's pretty much one of the Man. smallest figures. That is I've small. Ever done. <laughs> and then I I carved this wicker basket for Lunt Jewelry Company. This would have been, and they never did make this one for some reason, and they ended up closing their doors, which is another reason maybe. Yeah. But I did a ton of work for Lunt Silversmiths. Uh, this is Santa in a hot air balloon basket. It was going to be an ornament. A cr whoop, hold it this way. There you go. There it is. It was going to be an ornament that had a hot air balloon, a hand-blown glass Christmas tree ornament would have been under silver wires. Not thin glass like regular bulbs thicker hand-blown glass to make a hot air balloon uh with ropes and on this one the back ropes have have broken off over the years um and in fact mm. i can I, I came up with this just the other day i didn't know where this was this is the actual wax that i did the wax uh, see if it, you can see it's a styrene base and a styrene interior, very thin styrene. Ooh. Let me get some light in there somehow. There it is. And you can see the weaving. Yeah. That I did out of yeah. wax. All right. With those little Ooh. tools I showed you. Um, <laughs> and then I would have cast this into a hard plastic. And then I would recarved and added Santa climbing into it with yeah. his basket. And the whole thing had to be moldable so you could get the core. Remember, molding is always an issue. You have to be able to get the mold out. So all that's right, yeah. all built. It's built in. And that you learn with experience. That's where that engineering thing comes from and, and talking to the right folks. <laughs> yeah. <Getting> those <laughs> answers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Left Coast wants to know if you make your own wax. I do. I do. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I tried to replicate. Uh, the wax I used on 90% of what you've seen today, um, just a few years ago, maybe five. Yeah. Five to, mm. to 10, something like that. And even though I know what was in it, and I knew it took a special way of melting the wax, and I don't even mind telling you, when you use carnauba wax, and you're going to add it to, let's say, paraffin or surfboard wax, you have to heat the Carnaba first and hotter than the parent is going to be. Then as the 
carnauba is coming down in temperature, you can mix it in with the paraffin and you have a more plastic, more brittle, uh, it depends on how much you add, uh, plat wax to do a car from. And then, you know, at times I, I, I know I added, it wasn't talc powder, but it was a white powder. Mm. Uh, it may have talc. I remember it being talc, but when I tried it, it didn't work. And it may have been because I didn't mix it in correctly. And then the fourth thing you'd add to that recipe would be uh, pigment. So if you're doing a doll and you want a little pink so that you're yeah. in the frame of mind of making a doll vinyl, uh, then I would add a little pink. Okay. And similarly, uh, brown or whatever I'm, I'm making at the time. Yeah. Uh, let's see how good you know the yeah, current I market. <laughs> Who makes the best action figures currently, in your opinion, if you keep up I'm with it? I'm going to defer to my daughter for the first time in this interview. <laughs> I am. I'm going to. I try to keep him up to date. Yeah, she's 36 <laughs> and she collects. Well, the, the, there's not as many as they the used Wen to be. Weta? Oh, no, I, it's uh, not the Weta figure. No, I just love Weta. Um, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I um, grab one. Oh, booger. Uh, oh, don't sorry. don't ruin anything. Um, she likes those. Give me a moment, I'll get back to you. Yeah, she, we'll we get back to you in a moment. Okay. She's grabbing an example. Well, have you passed your skills on? It sounds like you have. Yeah, she's definitely a, a chip off the block. She does bigger stuff than I did. She, in fact, um, I'm happy to share and brag and be proud of my daughter for doing the only bodysuit for the <laughs> Godzilla movie. Uh, what was the title? The, oh, the, it was the a, second to last one. King of the Monsters. King of the I, Monsters. I, I, I do props and costuming they, now. It's basically foam fabrication, as it turns out, is very much like what my father does. And I grew up watching him do uh, only uh, with a... Uh, <laughs> home <laughs> yeah she grew up sitting on she sat on my lap <laughs> she sat on my lap when i was carving the freddy krueger doll you want to show just, your face I'm here saying hi. 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 <laughs> I make well, it must have been nice to have a dad and a dad that did toys oh it was great i grew up all yeah. of those all of those prototypes that went to auction broke my heart because that was what we called yeah. the morgue uh they were we, called the morgue well the i morgue. got his yeah, we had drawers out back called the morgue. It was written on it. So I would play with the morgue. And uh, growing up, I'd sit on my dad's lap as he sculpted Scuttle and Sebastian from The Little Mermaid and, and all mm. these cool monsters and what have you. And I'd play with those sea creatures toys. I was the kid. That yeah, she actually play got to play with them. As a kid, <laughs> sea creatures yeah. toys. Because I had all of those yeah, uh, prototypes here. that went to auction were the ones that I got to play mm. with. I have a few uh, things yeah. from the morgue that not necessarily one's dad made but just ended up there because these samples parts happen around. Yeah, parts happen uh, and uh, i refuse to sell even though like uh for instance one of my uh oh here we go but you can see this her, one would get her, high bids this actually. is just for i had lots of people begging uh -oh. me to sell this but yeah. i sold the whole morgue it was just an example break. when this we were doing listen when we were so doing this penguin figure <laughs> when we were doing oh, the power man. not made by my dad but i did but we had oh. like this I think Robin or something, and a few of the production pieces in parts that I'm I had to Joker. put back together. Uh, we have Joker. Yeah, it's today. right there. What? Got the Joker too. Oh, we do. Oh, yeah, a lot of people are gonna want is, that. Uh, Pete sample, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that no. other one was this given to a, me when yeah. we were doing the play set. So this is a prototype. The dark side. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure that Perfect. this. I don't think it's a production uh one in my i don't think so either way it was his his arm hard to tell right now lost his part his dad probably <laughs> took it and that's why it was in the toy. morgue but um For yeah i would have like um dad skull a whole lot mess of girls line toys uh but there was the uh, fairy tales there were little birds to compete with my little pony and uh my friends were all impressed i had a lot <laughs> but dad would buy the production models and then use a knife like a box knife and knife out the leg mechanisms so he was on when the we were doing other like prototypes bird figure and so i had a bunch of these beautiful the model pony-esque birds that but i got to all... play with but they all had brutal like their legs removed like knifed out i was like whatever i understand i get these <laughs> toys to play with but my we... friends were all a little horrified <laughs> yeah. they were all mutilated to some degree yeah and and yeah I couldn't feel bad, and and she still got to comb the hair, and 
So, oh, that's good. Yeah. But, uh, my favorite, my favorite toy is the modern line of me reporting toy news to father is uh, NECA has been my favorite. I believe. Yeah, NECA. If they do the uh, the Pacific Rim toys, they did some other. Uh, it's wonderful. I yeah, think that, you know, that, that's why dad's appreciation of the 3D printing thing comes in is because I said, I'll tell him like, they took the models from the movie and then they like sure. reduced it. Dad's like, oh, I did Yeah, that. and when they like, did yeah. that, they stayed more okay. true to the form than if they had said, here, sculpt it like it looks like on the computer and you'd end up struggling. Uh, yeah, we could yeah. do it. But it, it will also have, I, it, it, frankly, that handmade quality that gets built in when you make something that way. Um, and the idea that every single dimension is going to be accurate and they're doing it that way with 3D printing. And I'll remind you, they 99% of the time they have to hand finish them anyway. If it's going to become a caricature, yeah. sculpt it by hand or digitally, either way, it's still Yeah, still when they, the molds they, they machine it in, they still got to polish the molds by hand. And right. any nuances, you know, it does bring up personality at times that gets built yeah. in or out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, let's get a couple more, then we'll... Uh, oh, this should be... Do you have any horror stories about toys being put in the trash or good stories from the toy industry? I probably do. Give me a sec. Um, horror stories. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, horror for me, I... I if you all know, I, I did the, uh, thank you, my friend. Somebody said they liked it. Um, I did the Mickey Mouse telephone and the Garfield wall phone, not the first one on the desk, but the second one on the wall for Tyco. Yeah. And it was such a success that they went on and they asked me to do the Donald Duck telephone. And it was the best thing I had ever done. You know, mm. it was so animated. And right. he was holding old time telephone in his hand from the thirties upright. And, yeah, I remember that one. And, and I have him yelling into the phone. <laughs> and and absolutely uh they got out of the business that year. They the electronics oh. from China and whatnot were not trustable. They had too many failures and uh yeah, and I can attest to that because actually one of my phones died on the wall. Um, as a matter of fact, not all of them did, and there's still some out there. I know from friends and fans that there are some out there, um, but that's why they got out of that. So I was heartbroken. I mean, I was in money. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you put a month or two into a piece, and it was exquisitely done. I knew Disney was going to sign off on it right away without any changes at all because I. They, I knew that would be coming and for them to like pull the plug on that one was really heartbreaking for me. Um, yeah, it happens. It happens. Uh, my favorite story is, uh, opening a bet with, uh, the former owner of, uh, Knickerbocker toys when we did the, uh, Oh, it was a snuggle bum line. We have one here. Uh, you got the one. Here's a couple. This is mom and pop. Um, so when I got this commission, that was, whoops, this was kind of early on. It was a whole family called the Snuggle Bums. You can see it on my website, yeah. I suppose. And, and it's, on, on, it's online. There are a lot of collectors that still buy these uh, en masse. And they made a lot of them. Um, and there's a two to one or two. Oh. Hand me the both of them, please. Thank you. Yeah, here's a two to one of one of the kids on a turtle. And remember, this had to be moldable mm. front to back in, in one two, two piece mold. So for me to push the molding, which you can kind of see in the upper view that it's more difficult. But the kid on the turtle, that's what the kid on the turtle would look like in full scale. Yeah. Uh, half scale. And that's, this is the production size. So in other words, she would have gone mm. nicely with dad. Nice one. Um. The, the the happy part of that story is that I bet him. He had um, where's that hunk of road? Oh. He he had done more a lot of work from the uh, extruded road. Oh yes. Yeah. Um. So I bet him that uh, Fisher Price was going to love it. Yeah. Because I was new at this, and I just had the confidence, and he took my word. And this was in his Manhattan office. I don't know if you can see it. It's a Hot Wheels track. Oh, okay. I can tell what it was. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, here I'm gonna bring it in a little better. There you go. That's a Hot Wheels track when when they're purging the machine or getting it set up at the beginning of the day. Actually, they get it running and they let it ooze and ooze on the floor. So you can see Man. they're just getting the machine running, and it was sitting on his shelf or something. And yeah. I said, I'll, I'll bet you that they love it. And the happy part of that story is not only did I win the bet, but they put it in writing. I have the letter in a file box somewhere. <laughs> you always got the proof yeah. now. Yeah, that's the kind of fun you can have. And Tina's handed me a car that I added. You don't have to do that now. I added a car that we use as a sculpture or a doorstop. Uh, put a car a doorstop. Yeah, it's yeah. a good, yeah, or a little floor sculpture. So that, that's right. a fun that was a fun bet to win and a fun thing to do. Horror stories, yeah, um, not as many as you think. And and I will say this, I'm gonna say uh, nine out of 10 clients were great. And maybe one out of 100 was the client from hell. All right. Uh, does any, uh, yeah. When you're doing lines like the sea creatures that never got released, does it kind of like bum you out a little bit when you're like, man, uh, well, yeah, that's, you put your heart into it. Does. It does. That's why I was saying with the Donald Duck phone, I was I literally yeah. in the morning for about a month, maybe two months. <laughs> I was very depressed about it. You get down, yeah. you put your heart and everything you got into it. Yeah. And then they go, go, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah. no. So, Those you know, it's look really hysteric. good, too. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're being critical, it's not a, uh, an abortion, it's a miscarriage, you know, and, and any school is making babies for right. babies, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 You never so know. It, it, yeah. You, it gets emotional at times, but the highs outweigh the lows. You know, when I used to, let me tell you to this day, and when I see my stuff, even on YouTube, the old commercials and yada, yada, or, or these kind of interviews, you know, they uh, really made me feel great uh back yeah. then during the days when i was working for the biggest companies i would say that i was on my work was on every single network every single day on every single channel <laughs> at least two to five times on yeah. every single one of them kid shows afternoon morning saturday you name it uhf vhf nbc the whole lot of them and all those, I would we sit back and I would beam. It would make you feel really, really great. Sometimes I was on VHS duty, where if I'm watching my Saturday morning cartoons, if I see one of his commercials hit, record on my yeah, really, sure, <laughs> sure. So thank heavens for the internet these days. We've been over the last, you know, decade or two, yeah. been able to dig up some cool stuff. Just yeah, it's up. feel good. It's feel good stuff. Yeah, and you, you know, were, I mean, I never you were making everybody it. childhood. Yeah, you were yeah, making everybody's childhood, but your name. Yeah, people didn't yeah, know your name. Really? Yeah, all these kids have grown up uh, playing with my toys. I never got to meet them um, or hear about it. You know, we just knew that the yeah. clients made money. <laughs> and they're doing it again. Yeah. We're going to make more of those. And I was like, great, awesome. great. Nobody knows. You know, like, so in a sense, that's the legendary part. But the fame I never had beyond the occasional interview. Yeah. And that's okay. Uh, I like being anonymous. <laughs> I think we touched on this one. What became of the yeah, power no, of the actual uh, prototype, prototype you're referring to? Yeah, I understand. Um, I see what they wrote. I think the actual prototype, and there may be one or two of them around, I have no idea where that is. I was saying yeah. earlier that I used to have a piece, but we lost that. I'm just going to leave it simple. Thanks to Hurricane Sandy, we lost Oof. that. I had a couple pieces from it. I did have the big head from the top, which I uh, sold at auction that uh, I, I think the junk man has a picture of at some point. But, uh, I, you know, uh, we could look yeah. it up. I can find out who owns it. But I know it's a collection. Yeah, you talk about it. Just pull it up real quick in case anybody came late. This yeah, one right. Nice, the lit, yeah, those eyes. Yeah, that's the unit that we sold at auction. Yeah. For a good amount of money. That's how I'm Yeah, I'm pretty money. sure. For the sea yeah. powers. I'm sure proud. that uh, I'm sure that penguin prototype she has would go for quite a bit too. So, 
Oh, yeah, sure you want to buy a new car. That, the one that you've seen in the photographs all assemble, I, I really it would be so cool to see your photo more photos of it and find out who has it. I'd be I'd agree with that. Yeah, hopefully someone That'd does, cool. but yeah, I've yeah. Too, but I've been kind to the 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 people not me when it comes to my father's collection. <laughs> Yeah, we. She makes me hold on to certain things. She won't let me sell a few things, but uh, that's. Well, you gotta keep it. Yeah, we'll keep it in the family. Well, I think that guitar, the uh, gumball guitar, is a good example. <laughs> There's only one of those in the on the planet. I, I, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people um, wanted me to manufacture them. We couldn't make it cheap. There was just no way to make that cheap. Yeah. It, I, it, oh, affordable. By, yeah. Right now, it's really expensive that way um okay one of a kind yeah okay well this is fun we've been done an hour almost an hour and a half so we went a little long i hope you oh, don't mind but... it's been fun huh? yeah we i hope fun. everybody enjoyed what we had to offer i hope you all had a good time nice meeting you even briefly and you were doing you toy shows the... or anything i used to I, I i went to toy fair for 20 years in a row probably but uh not lately i think the yeah. last time would have been about 15 years ago Okay, I'll and I'll leave I'll Martin leave with things. this one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave with this one, Mr. Rowland. You're a fantastic sculptor and great inspiration. As a child, I really loved the Crash Dummies, Skid the Kid, and and yeah. my mother and grandmother. So I'll thank you, you with my that friend. One. You're the worst. Thank you. <laughs> the worst. Yeah, the worst. That's okay. Name. Well, I appreciate it, and maybe we can do it. In... What's that? It, I, I was just saying the worst might have been their name. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was their username. Okay, we yeah. can do this again. I can talk yeah, more maybe down about the road. it. We think about what you want me. I can show you how to do some wax. I can show you how to work in uh, styrene sure here at the bench. That. We can give you a little show and tell that way sometimes. I didn't really get into that, but I'm glad we covered what we did. I think we uh, covered yeah. a lot of mileage here. Yeah, I think I think we had a lot of fun. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it, and you did too. And uh, I'll uh, I'll be in touch with you. Maybe down the road do it again, like I said. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, pleasure. thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, that was Rich Roland. Hopefully, y'all. Sorry if you had some questions and I missed it. Just trying to listen, trying to watch him, and trying to watch the chat at the same time. So I may have missed you, and I'm sorry if I did miss it. Uh, hopefully, I didn't miss any super chats, but uh, hopefully, I didn't miss anything else. Let's see. We got thank you, Rich. We got love it. And man, that prototype penguin figure. Man. Hmm. And he did find the head, killing it with the guest. Thank you. Thank you, Indiana Smith. And um, he found the head to the V prototype, the female from the V line. That's pretty awesome there. Uh, yeah, I saw someone ask earlier about the V figures that's in the show. That was made for the show. Uh, I think I looked into it. I don't know if I talked about it when I did my V video. And I talked about it there. Or maybe looking into it. Uh, man, it's been awesome. Now, it was a good interview. He had a lot of good stuff. He kept, it looked like he kept everything, and not only did he keep everything, he looked like he kept everything close to close by. Thanks for coming to the junk room. So, uh, oh, hope that was a little better than playing Jeopardy. Got to take a break from Jeopardy every now and then. Great, that was. It was kind of funny when his daughter came in. She was about as she was so hyper about all of it. Should have interviewed her. <laughs> uh, please bring him back. Well, hopefully you guys like that. We can get him. It'd be nice to see him maybe do some work. Just put the camera up and watch him work. That might be pretty interesting right there. But, yeah, when she came in, she was pretty hyper about it. So that was pretty funny. Um, I think we're going to get out of here, guys. I don't, I, we're running late because I did this one eight instead of nine. Junk man, you're the best. Well, thank you, Kit Kat. Kit Kat better put a leash on it. Man, you the man. Oh, you're the best. Oh. Close enough to the man. Thank you, Jump Man. His personality was infinite. Yep, I agree. Jump Man is super fun. Jeopardy is super fun, especially with special guests. Can't decide. Some of you guys were liking when I had the guests come play. Of course, Robert Bauer Bauer Burnett didn't make it last week, uh, last night. But I have talked to Robert Meyer Burnett. Remember, he was going to be in the game last night. Didn't make it. He got screwed up. I talked to him. It looks like next Wednesday. I'm not going to announce it next Wednesday until we work out all the details again. But it looks like he said he'd rather do pop culture trivia anyway. So maybe next Wendy we'll have him on. Hopefully he won't cancel again on. Uh, I think that's it. I want to thank the moderator, the mods for the soap. Jumpman is so based. Um, 
Thank you, Mars, for holding down the chat. Uh, and everything, everything looked like it went fine in the chat, and everything looks good. So, guys, we will get out of here. I uh, will see you again probably tomorrow night at 7, and of course, 5 o'clock for the daily video. Uh, let me, what do I want to end this with? What? Uh, don't forget to go over to the Jack Jumpman live channel. Subscribe there if you hadn't, because we will slowly move everything over to the live channel. Y'all are sick of hearing that. Anyway, guys, thank you, guys. We will see you. Hey, jump man yeah. channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony. <laughs>